Hi, and in this video, I'm gonna share three ways you can know if your love will last. Hi there, Matt Schaefer, your empowerment connection and relationship coach here. I am a former attorney who's committed to using his powers for good and has dedicated his life to supporting women and creating deeper, more fulfilling connections with men. And I am so excited to be here to talk about this topic, which is really a big question that I get asked a lot by my clients and by my students all the time. How do I know if my love is going to last? And I've got some powerful questions you can ask yourself to really check in and discover and find out if it's going to last. But before we do that, take a second, hit that little subscribe button, and don't forget to click the link in the comments and caption. I have created some great training that I know is really going to help you in your dating and relationships. So check that out. And now let's dive in into this. How do you know if your love's going to last? Let's set a little context. There's a big principle that I want you to embrace here. It's that people come into your life for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. <laughs> Not all loves were meant to last forever. So let's release that expectation that every relationship and every connection we get into with a man needs to go the distance. Some are simply not meant to last forever, and that's okay. But there are some questions, there are some things you can look at and ways to check in with yourself and with your connection to find out and get some clarity around the trajectory and the sort of length of a relationship you're probably looking at. So let's start off with some basic assumptions. I am assuming that you are in a connection with a man. You've fostered some degree of relationship with a guy. And in that connection, you have good chemistry, right? There is a sort of polarity, there is a pull, there is attraction between the two of you that it shows up in the bedroom, it shows up in your dynamic, there were sparks between the two of you. Okay, I'm assuming that that exists. And the second assumption I'm making is that you guys have congruent capacities for intimacy, meaning that you understand each other's love languages and attachment style, and you're able to make each other feel good in the relationship. You're able to communicate and demonstrate and express love to each other in a way that lands for the other person. I did a whole other video on that that I'll link in the description. Be sure to check that out as well so you can really get clear on are you speaking the same language when it comes to love. And the third assumption I'm making before we dive into this stuff is that you are both in the right time for the relationship you're looking for, right? You're both in the same chapter of life. You're both looking for roughly the same type of relationship with each other. Because there's another phrase that I love to use is that the right person at the wrong time is still the wrong person. If you meet your dream guy, but he's in the middle of a messy divorce, he's probably not in the right time to foster a deep, meaningful relationship with you. So if these three basic assumptions are met, then it's time to ask, three big questions that will really help you determine if your love is meant to last. Let's dive into them. Now, the first important question to ask yourself when we're looking at can a love be sustainable is do you manage conflict in a healthy way? Because that's the thing, no matter how how great your relationship is, there is going to be conflict and that you need to have, if you want a love to last for a significant amount of time, you got to have a process in place to manage that and work through that in a healthy way. So are you able to give and receive feedback with your partner? And by feedback, I mean, are you able to tell him how you feel? And is he able to tell you how he feels, especially when he doesn't agree? Like if he's not feeling good about you, if he's not feeling good about something that happened with you, is there a safe space in the relational container for him to be able to communicate that to you? So I invite you to have a feedback process in place with your partner. And I talk about this in another video as well, but really, and it really boils down to really a three-step process. The first step is you ask for permission. You say, hey, you know, can I give you feedback? Can I share with you what's coming up for me right now? And he's going to say, yes, of course. And then you use this framework. When you said or did blah, the story I made up about it is blah, which led to me feeling blah. So when you told me to hurry up because we were late for dinner, the story I made up about it is that you were mad at me, right? And that I wasn't moving fast enough for you, which made me feel, you know, 
irrelevant and disrespected and whatever else, right? So you're basically helping him understand the way that his behavior led to your emotions without blaming him for your emotions, right? You're taking responsibility for the way that you feel. And so that's an example of a feedback process. There's a lot of different ones out there. That's one that I like to use with my clients and I'll, I'll link to that in the description as well. But uh, just go ahead and have a feedback process in place with your partner so that you guys can manage conflict effectively. Another great way to manage conflict is to have a 24 hour rule in place. So if you guys are having a fight, if you're having a conflict, if somebody's triggered, being able to take the time to just give each other space so that you can come back together in a more cooled down state and talk about your feelings in a grounded, uh, reasonable way. It's going to make a big difference. Now, a second big question to determine if your love is sustainable and can it last is, are you able to hold space for each other? It's the act of listening to what your partner has to say in an active way that is fully focused on supporting them. Okay. So when you're holding space for your partner, usually it's because they're going through something or they have something to express. I did a video on this as well <laughs> that I'll link in the comments, but it's basically you asking them, would you like to share with me what's coming up for you? And then they're going to go ahead and they're going to vent to you whatever it is that's coming up for them. Hey, so I can see that you've had a bad day. You know, would you like me to hold space for you? Can I hold space for you? Would you like to share with me what's been going on? And then they'll say, okay, yes, great. And then they'll talk to you about their day or whatever's been going on in their lives that they're really struggling with right now. And then all your job is to do is to listen and not take what they're saying personally, because sometimes that's a big part of holding space is that some of what they might have to say or communicate, it might involve you. So part of their bad day might have been that they texted you earlier that day and that you didn't respond and they felt unsupported by that. And so part of holding space is you don't get defensive, you don't shut down, and you don't take personally what your partner is sharing with you because it gets to be a safe space for them to release whatever it is that they've been holding on to. And then when they get done uh, talking about whatever it is that they were talking about, then you ask them, okay, how can I support you? Don't assume that uh, they want you to fix them, that they want you to fix their problem. That's a common mistake that that's not active listening. If you're listening and just waiting to provide your solution to them, that is not truly supporting them in the way that they need. Maybe they want advice. Maybe they want a solution, but maybe they just want empathy or kindness, you know? So ask them when you're done holding space for them, how can I support you? and let them tell you what it is that they want. That's what it means to hold space for your partner, and that is a great tool that's gonna help the relationship have a better chance of going a long ways. Now, a third important question to ask, probably the most important question to ask on if your love will last, is do you and your partner have a powerful, dynamic polarity between the two of you? And by powerful, dynamic polarity, I mean, are you, for the most part, in a very empowered, surrendered, inviting, feminine space within the relationship? I talk about this a lot, right? We look at relationship as a container, right? And within the relational container, there's a masculine side and a feminine side. And it is your job, for the most part, to be on that feminine side, being an active, inviting, dynamic, magnetic, feminine force, inviting him to step deeper and deeper and deeper into his masculine and be that masculine driving physical force in the relationship. I've done a lot of other videos on that and I will link to them in the caption. But in addition to your polarity being powerful, it also gets to be dynamic. And what I mean by that is that these energies are not set they are not static. They are inherently flexible and fluid, right? And there are going to be plenty of times in a long-term relationship where you are going to need to allow your partner to shift energies with you. So there are going to be times where you, even though you're the feminine partner, the majority of the time in the relationship are going to need to shift into your masculine for whatever reason, right? Maybe because you're the one in control of a project or you're pushing forward on something, whatever it might be. Maybe it's something in, in, in the bedroom, right? A lot of times that's a great way to spice up things in bed is by you as the feminine figure in the relationship taking a more masculine 
uh, driving role and sort of calling the shots, taking control of him a little bit in bed uh, sexually, right? So by being able to play with these dynamics and shift the energy, don't be set in your ways, like be aware and conscious of your unique balance point of energy, right? And know the sweet spot, but then being able to shift it and be flexible with that polarity, that's going to really help this relationship have the best chance of lasting over time because any relationship that gets stuck, right, starts to stagnate. And that can happen energetically, that can happen physically, right? So when I'm talking about this dynamic energy, keep that dynamic energy in your activities as well. So be, be willing to be a loving, playful interruption to the routines that get built up over time in a relationship. So be spontaneous and really invite him to step outside of the habits and routines and practices that you've gotten into with him. Does that make sense? So if you're able to answer these three questions positively, that you do manage conflict effectively, that you are able to hold space and actively listen to each other in a healthy way, and that there is flexible and dynamic polarity between the two of you, then there's a great chance that this love is going to last because so often what causes love to go off the rails and what causes people to grow apart is that they lose that connection. They lose that intimacy. They lose that direct link between each other and they just drift apart. And that happens when conflicts aren't resolved and when people stop talking to each other at a deeper level level. So do these three things powerfully and effectively or commit to working on them and you're going to give your relationship the best chance to last for a really long time. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, take a second, hit that little subscribe button and don't forget to click the link in the comments and caption. I've created some great training that I guarantee is going to make a huge difference in your connections with men. Thanks so much for stopping by and I'll see you next time on my YouTube channel. Bye-bye.